Good morning, PT. Good morning, PT. Hallelujah. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Won't you stand to your feet this morning? Hallelujah. Right where you are, just open up your mouth and say something to him. We thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for seeing us through the holiday. We thank you, Jesus. If you got to see some family, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you got something good for Christmas, we thank you, Jesus. If you ate something at all this week, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you're doing. We thank you for what you've already done. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're doing this morning. Hallelujah. It is good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Here we can find peace and joy. Where we can find healing. Here we can find strength and comfort. Here where he can meet us we can be with him. We honor you, King. Y'all ready to worship him this morning? Sing with me. Be my strength, my strength, oh God. Be my strength, my strength, oh God. Father, Be my presence, my 
favorite verse right here. Someone's with me. When I'm weak, you're strong, oh God. So when I'm weak, I don't have to be strong. You're my God. Listen that one more time. So when I'm weak, mouth and worship him. We worship you, King Jesus. We worship you, King Jesus. You are our light, Jesus. You're my strength, Jesus. You're my peace, Jesus. 
I need you like I need water, Jesus. I need you like I need my strength, Jesus. We need you, Jesus. We need you now. How many of you believe that this morning? <laughs> You're our strength, Jesus. You are our peace. You are, your word is the lamp to our feet and the light to our path. But Lord, would you just light the way, speak a word over us, Lord, that we could move forward in. We honor you, King. We honor you for all that you've done. Yesterday we celebrated the birth of our King. Yesterday we celebrated the birthday of our Savior. And the only reason we could do that is because his Father sent him to this earth to put on the skin that we could be saved, that we could be redeemed from our grief and our sorrows and sin. So this morning we're going to honor the Father. Amen.
Jesus, so we often talk about, you know, the true meaning of Christmas. You know, it's like, you know, the theme of every church's Christmas month, right? But that third verse, love so undeniable I can hardly speak. Peace so unexplainable I can hardly think. These are not things that somebody who doesn't know Jesus can say. You know, that peace that surpasses all understanding when you know who your Savior is. It's priceless. There's nothing quite like it. Because it's peace. <laughs> it's, it's real peace. It's, it's not temporary peace. It's not peace for today. It's not peace for the hour. It's peace so unexplainable at any given moment. I can't really explain to you why I am so at peace. But I know my Savior. I know my King. I know where I'm going. You can't, you can't pay for that. You can't. It's, it's, it's priceless. It's, it's, it's love so undeniable. I, I can hardly think peace so unexplainable I I can hardly and this part as you call me deep who am I but as you call me deeper still as you call me deeper still as you call me come on send deeper still as Whatever it is, Jesus, I have enough peace in my soul that God, no matter what you call me to, I will say yes. No matter what you ask of me, Lord, I'm going to say yes, Jesus. Deeper still as you call me, yeah. He's calling you deeper. Said he's calling. He's calling you deeper still. As you call me, deeper still as you call me, deeper still into love, love. Everyone, sing this with me. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. Sing it to him. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who Thank you for your son, it's Jesus. Who it's who I am. It's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I love by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. 
I gotta get off the, I gotta get off the stage, but I just I gotta sing it. Cause he's perfect in all of his ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways to us. Anybody here have kids? Raise your hand if you have kids. Now, keep your hands raised if you would have sent yours to save the whole earth. Keep them raised if, that, if you would have sent yours to save people you don't know before you, after you. You would have sent yours? You would have sent Jess? He's perfect in all of his ways. Because even if you would have, you still ain't perfect, right? But he is. We serve a perfect God who doesn't expect you to be perfect, but loves you the way you are. And if that doesn't give you peace, I don't, I don't know what will. Because he's perfect in all of his ways. He's perfect in all of his ways. You're perfect in all of your ways to us. Y'all can go, y'all can go, y'all can go, y'all can go. Sing it. You're perfect in all of your ways. Sing it with me, y'all. Perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways to God is our good, good Father. Amen. Amen. With that, uh, we can be seated at this time. Uh, my, name, my name is Deidre Tao, and I am the lead coach of our small groups here at PT. And I just wanted to welcome everyone. Welcome. <laughs> um, to all of us in the sanctuary, it's really good to be together this morning. And I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Um, and we also give a warm welcome to everybody who's watching at home on their tablet or TV, on their device. Welcome everybody at home. And we know that many of our PT family are traveling at this time. They may be halfway around the world. So we just want to say we love you. We miss you. We can't wait to see you again. And come back safe and sound. Um, and at this time, I also want to recognize anybody. Is there anyone here who has never been to Pentecostal Tabernacle in the building before? If there is someone, would you stand so that we could recognize you? We don't want to embarrass you and make you say anything. But in case there is anybody here who's never been in this building before, we want to acknowledge you. <laughs> amen. Amen. Oh, welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so glad you're here, and um, you can be seated at this time. Thank you so much for coming. Um, someone is coming around to give you a little booklet. It looks like this. And uh, inside, you'll see that it has some information in there for you if you're um, interested in checking out more about what our church is about, who we are, and the things that we offer here. Inside, there is a tear-off sheet. So if you could kindly open it and look inside. There's a tear-off sheet um, that you can fill out. Um, and in that, you, uh, after you fill that out, please write as legibly as you can, if you don't mind, um, because we like to send out something to you in the mail afterwards. Don't worry, we're not going to spam you and send you stuff. We just want to send you a, welcome, a thank you card for coming and spending your time with us this morning. Um, we also have a special song to sing to you. <laughs> so if everyone would join in with me and just wave from your seat. We usually shake hands, but today we'll just wave. Amen.
welcome again and Merry Christmas to you. Um, at this time, I also wanted to draw your attention to something. Um, we are uh, in the, at the end of the year, we always do a Christmas offering. And this year, what we're doing is we are working on renovating our basement space, amen. <laughs> we're gonna get a finished basement. <laughs> Um, and I am personally so excited about that for several reasons, but I thought that one of the ways I could tell you more about why I'm excited about that is by showing you. So if you have a phone on you today, would you um, go to ptspice.org real quick? That is our website. Oh, you want me to talk about the video? Oh. <laughs> They're rolling a video right now that shows... Oh, take my mask all the way off. Okay, you got it. I'll do as I'm told. <laughs> take my mask all the way off. Sorry. Um, so we have a video rolling right now that shows the, um, the sanctuary, but also the basement. Um, this is the, the basement space that, as you can see, is really unfinished. The church that was here prior to us had used it for some Sunday school rooms, but it really is in need of a renovation, amen? So um, one of the reasons that I'm excited about this, and I want you to go to, your, um, to the website if you can, ptspice.org, and scroll down on the homepage, and you'll see an icon uh, and a graphic for small groups. Um, and so uh, click on the button that says Get Connected. It's like a, a yellow bubble. And that will show you all of our small groups. We have 13 small groups right now, which is awesome. Um, and you know, we have many ministries in the church. Some are um, online, some are offline right now because of the pandemic, but small groups are going strong. And that is really, PT, the best way to stay connected during this time, amen. We have 13 groups that meet during the week, sometimes bi-monthly or monthly. We have a group for women, for teens, for men, even for aspiring chefs, and even for teachers. So there's all kinds for everybody, um, and we want you to take advantage of that. So scroll through and look through the different um, small groups that we have, and to check one out, all you have to do is click on one of the yellow buttons under somebody's name, and that will help you, um, they, they will get in touch with you and tell you, oh yeah, we, we meet on Zoom on Wednesday nights, or we're doing a millennial meetup, we're gonna go down to the park, or we're gonna go to this event or that museum. Um, it's, it's just awesome, okay guys, so please check it out. But the reason that I'm tying that into the basement is that we would like for more small groups to um, come about, amen? So we know that the basement space has plenty of room, and that would be great for people who want to meet indoors in a space, but to do so in a safe manner. That way you can sit maybe 10 to 12 people. It's still a small group. We don't want to get too much bigger than that because it's a small group, amen. Um, but um, that way it gives people a chance to gather safely and comfortably. Some of our city apartments and homes don't have enough room for even eight people to gather safely and comfortably. So we need a space here at the church. Another reason why I'm excited about the basement space is because we have civic groups like Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts that would like to use our facilities. And we already have an amazing partnership with the, Am the Amigo School right down the street. My kids are alums of that school. And they come in and do music programs or kindergarten breakfasts and things like that downstairs. But it would be great if we could also say yes to other civic groups, amen? Um, and then the third and final reason that I'm excited about renovating our ba basement space is because then we can use the church not just on Sundays for families, uh, Sunday school, but we can use it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So I'm excited about that. We can have other people come in, civic groups, as I mentioned, small groups, and even you know church teens and things like that can use that space. Space is at a premium in the city of Cambridge. <laughs> so we want to leverage our resource well. So if you would, take out your phone again. If you still have it in your hand, that's awesome. Go back to ptspice.org and click on the top um, icon that shows PT. That you want 
for giving. Here it is. Um, and the, the Christmas uh, offering is under the Give Online um, drop down. So if you could click on Give Online and then Christmas um, Fund or Christmas Offering. And you can put in any amount, $5, $10, $100, whatever you feel um, the Lord is leading you to give, that will go towards our basement renovation. Amen? The Christmas offering. I'd also like to bless the, the offering, the tithes and offerings that we give regularly. Um, and then I will also um, pray for our speaker this morning, Sister Delia Umuna. Amen. Thank you, God, so much. Um, Lord, I'm just so blessed by this church, and I thank you that uh, my family and I have been here, that we just celebrated our nine years of partnership here at PT. So grateful, God, so grateful for this house, for this community, for this family. Lord, it's such a privilege and honor to be part of it. And I know I speak on behalf of many who feel the same way. Lord, um, no matter where we are in our faith walk with you, if we're just taking that first step or if we're taking another step or another step, um, as you call us deeper still, as the song that we sang earlier, you call us deeper still into your love, into your walk with you. Just continue to call us deeper still wherever we're at in our faith journey right now. Answer our questions, God. I pray that you would bless the offering, the tithes that we give out of faith in you, out of wanting to invest in your kingdom. Lord, this is a day when we can really rejoice and be glad. God, thank you so much. Lord, um, please bless our offering and our tithes today as we give not only to um, the regular things that we always do out of our tithing, but out of this special Christmas offering. Thank you, God. I pray you'd multiply it and bless it. And I also pray for my sister in the Lord, Sister Delia. I pray that you would bless her as she speaks this morning. We pray over the sermon that it would touch hearts both here in the upper sanctuary, downstairs in the fellowship hall, um, and also those who are watching at home. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, PC, won't you stand up to your feet? Y'all good? That Christmas meal still got you slowing down, huh? Sorry, we're gonna work it off right now. Y'all ready? <laughs> they were like, what? <laughs> Our God is greater. 
God is good. Amen. God is good? Okay. Praise the Lord. It's good to see so many of you out, especially, number one, the day after Christmas, and then number two, the day after Christmas. 
But it is indeed an honor to be here in the presence of the Lord and celebrating uh, this last Sunday of the year. And also to those of you who are joining online, whether you are uh, at home or on vacation or some of you are out of the continental United States and just it's just good to know that uh, we have the facilities and equipment enough to to broadcast our service globally so that anybody who wants to attend and be in the house of the Lord they can do so can we praise God for that that is absolutely amazing in the goodness of God amen well um Every year around this time, and it's probably been for definitely as long as we know we have owned this building, so probably about 10 years now, uh, our church gives an award to a person outside of our congregation who has gone above and beyond their sphere of responsibility to serve our city. I asked our mayor Mayor Sumbul Siddiqui and City Manager Louis De Pasquale, and our Police Commissioner uh, Christine Elo, who's actually here this morning. Can you give people a wave? Uh, amen. With these masks, people probably don't even recognize you without your uniform. <laughs> and also, uh, uh, we as chaplains report to uh, uh, Pauline Wells, another wonderful person. You can wave your hand, Pauline. She's a, another part of the command staff of the police department. Um, but we asked uh, them to send a few words on behalf of our 2021 PT Community Service Award recipient. And so here's their summary. Um, Brian Core has been the executive director of the Cambridge Peace Commission and the police review and advisory board for well over a decade. In addition to these two positions, Brian served 10 years on the board of the National Association of Civilian Oversight of Law Enforcement, including three years as its president. He's a steadfast advocate for the city of Cambridge residents, promoting peace, and justice and helping Cambridge to sow both local and global connections. Brian is also a believer who does the work of justice in his role as, pe as peace commissioner. Brian has led an effort in Haiti to help Haitian citizens to recover from the devastating earthquake back in 2010, which killed over 300,000 Haitians. Brian has a willingness to go above and beyond to help our Cambridge residents and our city during times of need. A perfect example of this is Brian taking a lead role to assist our city in setting up a new virtual call center during the early stages of the coronavirus pandemic last year. His leadership enabled city employees, listen to this, to call over 10,000 Cambridge senior citizens to conduct wellness checks and to see if they required assistance. Can you just give God a praise for that? Wow, wow, God bless you, bro. He then helped establish and manage the city's COVID-19 testing and vaccine hotlines, all while never missing a beat with his other and main responsibilities. Although I personally have known Brian for over 10 years, I really gotten to know and appreciate him when we started working together as part of the Cambridge Police Department's chaplaincy program eight years ago, which involves myself Pastor Lorraine Thornhill, who also won this award last year, and Pastor Larry Kim, who's pastor of Central Square Church. Brian is a true gem and helps provide me, along with Dr. Marion, who's sitting right next to his, Brian's wife, 
with, out, with an outsider's perspective on how Pentecostal Tabernacle is doing with regards to fulfilling our role in this city, which God has called us to do, which is serve and to be good neighbors. PT partners and friends, both those of you who are in the building and those of you who are online, may I present to you the winner of our 2021 Pentecostal Tabernacle Service Community Service Award, Brian Corr, Peace Commissioner of the City of Cambridge. these COVID restrictions. So first of all, we want to present you with this reward award. Let me read it first. The Pentecostal Tabernacle 2021 Community Service Award presented to Brian Corr, a man whose work and calling exemplifies the heart of service to the city of Cambridge. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 20, verse 27, Whoever wants to be great must be the servant of all, and you truly have been a servant of all. God bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Bishop Brian. Thank you, PT. Thank you to my wife, Kathleen. My partner, my friend, my companion, my strength. And thank you, God, for this recognition of the work I do on behalf of you and on behalf of our community. I, I thought I should prepare something, and then I thought, no, I won't prepare anything because uh, I'm a Quaker, and that, that path, that faith, we, we ask that God give us words to speak that come through us to you. So my prayer is that what I say to you today comes straight from God to you. It's, it's just so powerful to receive an award, to be recognized by friends and colleagues, to be recognized by the church. And there's so much I, I want to say, but I think what I'm led to say is that this award is not for me, but this award is for us, for our community. In this time of fear and scarcity, when people are so afraid, and yet we know the promise that's been made to us is that hope and abundance and love will be ours if we are faithful and if we do as we are asked to do and as we are led. And so in this moment, I just ask that all of us continue to try to seek to do what's right, to try to find justice, to try to find the truth, to try to believe that even in these times, we know that we are promised eternal life, but that to receive that eternal life, we must be faithful. And that faithfulness is not just about showing up at church. It's about doing the work of justice and peace every day, about loving those around us, no matter how upset we may be, about caring for those who need care, no matter how much they may have done something wrong, about ensuring that we do what's right every day, all day, because that is what we are asked to do, that is what we are led to do. And this award, this recognition, I hope is a way to keep me on that path and remind others that when we do what's right, when we are faithful, that we will be rewarded. And that this, this small token represents the true path and the true faith and the true love 
that God offers to all of us and that we must do our best to return to God and to share with all of those who we share this city with and this planet with. So thank you so much, Bishop Brian. And I, I don't want to start naming names, but thank you to all of you who played any role in this. And again, it's really a blessing for me to be here today. So thank you and bless you all. Can we give him another hand? Let's give him a standing ovation, folks. Amen. Wow. God bless you, Brian. You said you're a Quaker, but you started preaching like a Pentecostal. <laughs> uh, well, I'm excited about our speaker for this morning's service. Um, many of you know her as uh, Delia, Sister Delia, Auntie Delia, but I'll give her her proper introduction. She is Professor Delia Omuna of the Harvard Law School. And she is probably, you may not, because she walks in such humility, she is uh, probably one of the top defense lawyers in the country. Uh, uh, she's been on our recommendation boards with regards to uh, the choosing of attorney generals. Um, and to, to let you know how, how respected she is to, to make sure everyone gets justice. She was even asked if she would defend the uh, police officer who killed George Floyd. And how they got her name is because she's just that well known. And yet, above all that, and you may say, well, did she do it? Obviously, she did not. Um, but she said something very interesting about that. You can ask her that personally. She shared it during uh, the Fan into Flames uh, uh, service virtually. And it was a powerful answer that she gave because she believes everybody deserves justice. Praise the Lord. Everybody deserves justice. And, and sometimes justice may not be favorable. It's quiet in this church, but that's okay. But we're just grateful to have such a quality woman in our congregation. And uh, as we are summing up this year of justice, we had 12 uh, subjects of justice from, suit, from uh, food insecurity to health care justice. And we decided that we would end this year on restorative justice, dealing with uh, our prison system. And amen. Amen. God bless you, Jerry. You should hear Jerry's story. The redemptive power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God bless you, Jerry. Amazing story. Miracles. I, I, anyways, let me, let me keep going. But um, uh, more important than that, uh, we wanted to wait till the end of the month because we knew that we wanted to make sure that her two... Uh, adult children now, I can't believe I'm saying this, uh, who are away to, in College of Washington, D.C., they, I wanted to make sure that they were here to be able to hear their mother minister the word of God. Uh, more importantly, Delia is a woman of prayer. My God, she's a woman of prayer. We've had midnight prayer out of the pandemic last year, March 2020, we had midnight prayer. Uh, Monday through Friday, every night at midnight, and I don't think, this is crazy, I don't think Delia has missed one night since we began in March of 2020. That is amazing. God bless you, Delia. 
there is times when she's come back from not only teaching two or you know, three or four courses, but also dealing with uh, uh, three or four clients. She gets calls at midnight, calls at three o'clock in the morning for people to come and just um, just for her to come and defend a number of people. And she's just such a woman of God, such a precious mom, such an example to the body of Christ. And so I could say a whole lot more, but could you all open up your hearts, both in this room and online, to hear the word of the Lord from our sister, professor, auntie, friend, Delia Amuna. Well, good morning, church. Good morning, good morning everyone. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Merry Christmas. Merry, Mer I am so excited to be here and to see many faces. I thought for sure after you were done yesterday eating, you will be fast asleep right about now. So Merry Christmas. And as we say in England and in Africa, happy Boxing Day. Uh, happy Festivus to the rest of us. And if you, if you had grievances, I hope you didn't bring them here. I hope you took them to the Lord, okay? I see them laughing back there. The, the, those were jokes from um, my kids. So praise the Lord. All right, so we're going to get started today. Um, and I'm asking the Holy Spirit to just speak through me. There is a lot that he has put on my heart um, about restorative justice. And so uh, we have two anchor vers verses this morning. I'm going to call up the two most important people in my life, two most important humans in my life, uh, to read these verses. Uh, first up will be my firstborn child, uh, Ifani Ruth Umuna, um, 19 years old, sophomore in, we're actually wearing her mother's shoes, by the way. Um, <laughs> yes, she, she went into my closet this morning, I see that. Um, 19 years old, sophomore at college, 4.0 student. Just got a paid internship with Congresswoman Ayanna Presley. I can go on and on about this child of mine, but I, Mama, will you come up and just read the word of God? Great big sister and just an amazing young woman who loves the Lord. Good morning, PT. Okay, so today I'm going to be reading from Matthew um, 25, verses 34 through 40. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father. Take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you, a stranger, and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did for the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Thank you. Uh, coming up next to read from Luke chapter 10 is my one and only son, a man of God, uh, just turned 18 last month, um, freshman in college, uh, 4.0 GPA, 
got to keep up with his sister. Um, loves the Lord, loves his mom. <laughs> These aren't from her closet, by the way. <laughs> In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road, and when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus told him, Go and do likewise. All right, we're going to get to those um, scriptures uh, very shortly, but first I want to thank our bishop for trusting me to come up here <laughs> um, and to thank our elder lady Carmen, our classy, gracious, beautiful elder lady Carmen. Um, for the privilege of being up here. I thank you both so much for the example that you set and for being such great shepherds. So today, the bishop asked me to speak about restorative justice. And obviously, the first thing I did was try to figure out how to do the research and, and all of this stuff. And the Holy Spirit said, remember that first you are a woman of God, and so come to me in prayer. And so as um, our wonderful uh, Mr. Kerr just said, um, I am trusting the Holy Spirit to just speak through me um, and minister, uh, and I believe that that's what he's going to, to do today. So, restorative justice. Um, I figured that one of the best ways to start is just by telling you a little bit about the criminal justice system because restorative justice as a theme started off um, as a concept within the criminal justice system. So Bishop talked a little bit about the work I do, but I have been, um, for, for lack of a better, better uh, phrase, a public defender for the past 23 years. Yes, I teach at Harvard Law School, but at heart, I'm a public defender. I am really, um, I, convinced of this, that Jesus Christ himself would have been a public defender if he had a profession on earth. Because that's all he did was defend us no matter what we do. And he does that even now before the Father. The Bible says that he sits at the right hand of God making intercession for you and me every single day. So he's a public defender and I'm proud uh, to be one. So the criminal justice system, what do you need to know about it? I am proud and privileged to represent people who for the most part cannot afford lawyers adequate representation, and so that's what I get to do. As you can see from the pictures, these are some people who are in the criminal justice system. This is what our prisons look like. This is how people, human beings, are being housed. Um, there's uh, this picture, for example, breaks my heart. This is how people who, no matter what they've done, this is how we're housing them in prison. So, what do we know about the criminal justice system? The criminal justice system in the United States is broken, all right? There's no other way to, to, to say it. There's not, nothing else to, to say about it. Like I said, I have had the privilege of representing people, some people charged with shoplifting, uh, uh, thefts, robberies, all the way up to sexual assaults and murders. I have done enough, many trials, way too many trials that I can count. Um, I have practiced in several ju jurisdictions, I'm licensed in several states, and I've had the privilege of representing people in those states. Um, I have represented people from as young as seven to as old as 90, 
all right? And I can assure you that there are three things that I have learned in doing my work. The first is that we are broken. People are broken. Reverend Thornhill talked about the holes that we have within us. You'd be amazed how many holes people have particularly when you find yourself caught up in the criminal justice system. And, you know, we can sit in church, and a lot of us, you know, by God's grace, have never been arrested, never been prosecuted, never had to go to the, through the criminal justice system. God bless you. But I tell you what, that doesn't mean you haven't done enough to be arrested. It doesn't mean that you haven't done enough to be uh, prosecuted. It's just that maybe you haven't been caught yet. Okay, not caught, but, you know, just never been caught. And a lot of us are one bad decision away from being in the criminal justice system or the bad decision of somebody else in being in the criminal justice system. So just because people are in the criminal justice system, don't look down on them, all right? Praise the Lord every day that you are not in it, but do not look down on them. So the first thing, like I said, that I have learned is that we, this, the people are broken and we have holes within us. The second thing is they need compassion. Compassion. Not let's lock them away and throw away the key. Compassion. Because each and every one of us, particularly if you've been saved, how many of you here have experienced God's mercy? I'm raising both hands and a feet, right? Um, if you've received God's mercy and God's grace, then you can understand, hopefully, what it means to have compassion for others. And then the third thing that I have learned in doing this work, no one, not a single person, is beyond the redemptive power of God. It doesn't matter what you've done. It does not matter what you have done. You are not beyond the redemptive power of God. Now, I operate in evidence, so I'm going to show you the evidence of that in the Bible. But I want to stress that because I want you to bear that in mind as I continue on this talk, that no one is beyond the redemptive power of God. So in our criminal justice system, just uh, some numbers to throw at, at you, we spend $81 billion every year on corrections. 81 billion. It takes $29,000 to incarcerate a person, an inmate. Do you know how much we spend on education for a child? 13,000. Do you realize that if you're in the criminal justice system, you, like, I'm sorry, if you're a black man in this country, you're more likely to go to jail than you are to go to college, than you are to get married, than you are to join the military? Why? Do you understand that one in three black men in this country is under the supervision of corrections as I speak? Our system is broken. It is racist. It's inequitable. Do you realize that since the Washington Post has been keeping statistics that the police kill on average, 950 people annually. Compared, for example, to the UK, where two people lost their lives in an encounter with police last year. Even during the pandemic, the number was close to 1,000. That's our criminal justice system. The other thing is we are so interested in punishment that we forget about redemption and rehabilitation. We want to punish so severely that we forget about redemption. And I say this because in Boston, in the last year alone, nine black men have been released from prison after serving so many years in prison because of police misconduct, poli uh, prosecutorial misconduct. It, 350 people have been exonerated for crimes they didn't even commit. Let me tell you something. I, I go to the jail quite frequently, Nashua Street, South Bay. It is hard to go in there and come back out. Imagine going to prison for 30 years for something you didn't do. 
when I mean we punish harshly, I don't know if we have that picture, but I wanted to, uh, Brother Jeff, do we have the picture of, uh, yes, this gentleman, Joe Ligon. So Mr. Ligon was 15 when he went to prison. 15. He didn't kill anybody. He didn't rape anyone. He was part of a group of teenagers that he barely met. Uh, he couldn't read and write at age 15. He had grown up in a lot of poverty. And what happened was he hung out with a group of people. They got into a lot of trouble. He stabbed someone. The person didn't die. But somebody else in his group actually killed somebody else. And he was convicted by guilt, uh, for guilt by association. And so they basically did was lock up this 15-year-old and throw away the key. Why we can, in good conscience, sentence him to... Actually, the only reason he's out is because the laws were changed that says juveniles cannot be given life in prison, that it's cruel and unusual, that it's unconscionable. That's the only reason he's out. If that rule hadn't been changed in 2016, he will still, he will have died in prison. That's our criminal justice system. That's what we do. We say your life is not even worth redemption. We don't care about rehabilitation. We don't care about deterrence. We just want you gone. And I'm gonna uh, move on with this statistic. The people who ask for the most, the harshest punishments are Christians. I just was looking at some Pew research that was done 73%, 73% of evangelicals want the death penalty. And the people who don't even believe in God said we shall spare the lives of people who have sinned against us. When I go to speak at conferences around the, the, the country, one of the questions I get a lot is, how can you represent those people? And I get it from Christians. And I get very puzzled by it. And I say, well, you realize that the reason Jesus came was for the least of these. Did you end up getting mercy and grace from God and then all of a sudden he ran out of mercy and grace? Like, like did it end with you and now we can't extend it to others? Uh, did, it, did, it just, did it just be like, oh, we're done here now, L like these people? No. And so people ask me, how can you? And I'm like, how can I not? Proverbs 31, verse 8 and 9 says, speak up for the least of these. Give voice to the poor and the needy. Give voice. It is the reason why in 20 years of, 23 years of practice, I have never charged anyone a dime in representing them. Oh, the, Professor Muna, but we can pay. We can pay $50,000 retainer fee. That's okay. Because my Bible mandates that in my position, if I'm able to represent, to show the grace and the mercy of God, the grace and the uh, provision of God. And so when I hear Christians want punishment, and want to punish harshly, it bothers my soul because that doesn't represent Jesus. It does not. And so because of all the harsh punishments that have come about, including a man who was convicted two weeks ago, he was convicted of killing um, uh, four people in an accident and they gave him 110 years for an accident. Uh, okay, <laughs> all right. And so the idea of restorative, restorative justice is this notion that says we punish too harshly. Let us focus on reconciliation from the, with the offender to reconcile with the person they have offended so that they can restore relationships. For, it's for reconciliation 
of relationships. And practically, the way this works is you will uh, get, there, there's a mediator, somebody who comes and brings the offender and the person who's been harmed. They put them in a room. The person who has done the offending, who has committed the sin, says something like, I am so sorry. I know I did this. Maybe here's the explanation for why I did this. Um, and the person who's been offended has a choice. They can say, I want you to know this is how the robbery impacted me. This is how the thing that you did to me hurt me. But because you've expressed remorse, because you have said you're sorry, I forgive you. And here is what I'm going to need for you to make me whole. Either restitution, a letter of apology, whatever, right? So at the most simplistic terms, that's what restorative justice looks like. The two come together, there's a mediator, and this works well. It works especially in juvenile courts, right? It, it really works. It works in, in other relationships, husband and wife, uh, community, you know, police and communities. Uh, it, it really does work. But do you notice that it has limitations? It requires somebody to say, I'm sorry. <laughs> it requires somebody to show remorse. And so as I begin to sh began to study restorative justice and what I was going to share with you, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to tell my people about biblical restorative justice. And I was like, oh, okay, Lord, what is that? And he said, look, um, look. I'm over 40 now, so I got to wear glasses to read. Um, biblical restorative justice is found in Luke chapter 23, verse 34. And it basically just says, as Jesus was on the cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they're doing. So the difference there is that Jesus was willing to extend mercy and grace without anybody having to say, I'm sorry. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8, that while we were yet sinners, while you were out doing your thing, not loving God, not caring, he loved you enough to die for you. And so biblical restorative justice is simply that. Forgive. No conditions. Forgive. Oh, I know that's a hard thing to do. You're probably rolling your internal eyes at me, right? But it is the word of God. It says, forgive. No preconditions. No, the person has to say sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> mm. so, so, so the Holy Spirit said to me, yes, you talk about people who are in physical prisons, but he said, do you know there are people in PT in emotional prisons? There are people in PT who don't speak to each other. They avoid lanes and kind of, they've mapped it out, how to avoid that person and not speak to that person in church. In church. Mm. Mm. Raising holy hands, speaking in tongues in church. And yet, they have offense against each other. I'm here to tell you, you can't do that in 2022. Not if you want to go to where the Lord wants to take you. <laughs> I also want to tell you mm, that there is an anointing, there is blessings that come when you forgive, when you just obey the word of God. I'm not telling you anything that I am not, that the Lord hasn't worked on my heart about, I, I would not dare stand up here and tell you something that the Lord hasn't worked on with me. I can assure you that I used to be an angry person. I used to be broken, broken as a, as a, a victim of domestic violence. I was a broken person. I was angry. I will go to court and defend people and try murder cases and come home and be in hell and have 
to call myself a child of God. I, I wasn't sure if I was angry at myself or God or whomever. And I don't know about you, but I wanted some justice. Oh, I wanted justice that said, Lord, if this person never wakes up again, that's fine with me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know you guys are holier than I am, but that, that was me. That was me. And then one day, as I went before the Lord, the Lord said, Delia, there are places I need to take you. There are places, there are things I need you to accomplish as my servant that will never happen for as long as you do not release this into my hands. Forgive, even if he never says I'm sorry. Forgive, even if he never issues a mere copa. I need you to be obedient to me first and then see me do my work. Now, just because you forgive someone doesn't mean they don't, there's no accountability. There will be accountability. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 10, 31, it is a dreadful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. So when you release that person into the hands of the Lord, <laughs> you don't have any part in it. So it's either the Lord redeems them and restores them, or he does what he needs to do. <laughs> do you understand? So, but when you're holding on, you are saying to the Lord, I don't trust you. I don't trust that you can do this thing here, justice. When you hold on to unforgiveness, you invalidate what we celebrated yesterday. You say to Jesus, it doesn't matter that you came for the least of these. It doesn't matter that you came to save. I'm holding on to my anger. I'm choosing to hold on to my pain. I don't know what to tell you, but in 2022, the Lord is saying, I, I, I need people who can come up higher. I need people who are more mature. Now, let me go right ahead because I want to show you, I want to demonstrate to you in the Bible examples of this. So we read Luke chapter 23 verse 34. When you get home, read more of it. You know what happened to Jesus? Our example, the one that we claim to follow, he was arrested for something he didn't do. He was charged for a crime he didn't commit. He, he was uh, assaulted. He was spat upon. Has anybody ever spat on you? Uh, he, he, was, he was vilified. He was mocked. While he was blindfolded, they said to him, why don't you prophesy? He did. He, he, he was beaten so badly, they tore his clothes, and he was walking around almost half naked. And he is God. Now, he had every reason to be angry. Would well, you agree with me? To be upset, to want vengeance, to want justice. As a matter of fact, if he were me, you know, like they do in the Marvel movie, where, what's, what's it, t help me out, Tail, what's his name? Thanos, Thanos yes. Where he, he snaps his finger and you just, you just disappear. Yeah, that, that would have been me. I will have been like, okay, Lord in heaven, uh, just let's just, just wipe all these people out. He would have been justified if he did that because he had been offended. But what did he do? He made a choice. He didn't wait for them to come ask for forgiveness. He didn't wait for them to express remorse. He just forgave them. That is the standard that he has for us. Whether you like it or not, that is the standard that he has, has, has for us. It's the same thing. Edozier read about the, um, uh, the, the man who was on his way from Jer Jericho to Jerusalem. Now, whenever we hear that story, people always focus on what the Levite did and what the priest did and what the Samaritan did. I have always focused on the people who did the, the crime. I wondered what kind of people they were. <laughs> I wondered what motivated them, right? I wonder about the, the victim. 
I, 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 in my mind's eye, I imagined that he had saved up enough money to go from, from Jerusalem to Jericho to go maybe buy a donkey for his business. And on his way, these two people who in, invariably will end up being my clients, um, you know, accost him. And they strip him of his clothes, they rob him. They probably, the, the Jericho Police Department probably arrested them because um, they left their fingerprints on some fig leaf, you know? They probably did that. Or one of them went and told the other one, um, uh, you know, took some of the proceeds and, and, and stashed it away somewhere, right? And that's how they got caught. But the man who was robbed had two choices. He could seek revenge, which he'll be justified in doing. Or if he was a Christian, he will forgive even without an apology. Oh, I know what you're thinking. You're like, well, what's the point if, all, if I'm always forgiven? When are they ever going to be punished? Leave that to God. Free yourself. Leave the punishment to God. The Bible says, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. Now, when you hold on to offense and unforgiveness, do you know what you're saying? You're saying that the person that you're holding on to is your God. Because if they don't issue an apology, you're not going to be whole. But God is your healer. <laughs> Not man, not woman. God is your healer. God is the person who redeems you. God is the person who gives you justice. Not man. The, the justice that you can give is very limited. I promise you that. There's not much. You can curse the person out. You can never talk to them. You can, but you are limiting yourself. And, you, and, 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 and the Bible, even Jesus said, if you're going to come, and, you, and bring a gift to the, to the church, and you have offense, he doesn't even want your gift. That's how very much the Bible takes forgiveness as a concept. It is important. Do you know how I know that nobody is beyond the redemptive power of God, and that's why you need to forgive? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the Bible and Acts chapter 9, Paul, Paul, do you know who Paul was before he, he's credited with writing 13 books in the Bible? Anybody want to guess what Paul did before? Yes, ma'am. Exactly. He killed Christians. Paul was a murderer. He murdered many people. Paul will go and make false accusations and get as many Christians in jail. That was Paul. That's what he did. In today's day and age, can you imagine Paul after he had committed all those crimes and walking into PT, the kind of side eye we'll all give him? Right? Right? We will. But let me show you what the Bible says about Paul. This should bless you. The Bible says in Acts chapter 9, uh, when, 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 oh Lord, help me here, Jesus. Um, it says, the Bible says in Acts chapter 9, but the Lord said to Ananias, go, this man is my chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles and their kings and to the people of Israel. You, who has offended you that the Lord cannot redeem. I promise you that. If he can redeem Paul, he can redeem the people in your life who have offended you, who have hurt you. That is a promise from God. One of the things that the Lord showed to me as I was reading on Paul was that he used Ananias, right? Because Ananias is like, God, I don't know about this because this man was busy killing people. And the Lord said, that is true, but he's my chosen instrument. And I need you, Ananias, to be my restoration agent. 
Who is a restoration agent? The restoration agent is someone who is willing to be used by God to repair relationships. Period. That's what you are. So if you are a child of God, you are a restoration agent. The Lord used Ananias to encourage Paul to restore his sight, to feed him, to vouch for him. He used Paul, I mean, he used Ananias to restore Paul. And because of that, look at the man that Paul became. We read all these books in the Bible because he was restored. We read all these books in the Bible because the redemptive power of the Holy Spirit was able to reach Paul. Would you be a restoration agent for the Lord? I'm going to close out. Uh, I'm almost done here. Uh, by reading two things. I'm going to ask you this question. Why should you forgive? Why should you practice biblical restorative justice? Out of obedience. That's it. Out of obedience. Because that's what Jesus says you ought to do. But there's also, like I said, a blessing that comes with this. There's a blessing that comes with this. How can you be a restoration agent? I'm glad you asked. Turn with me to Luke chapter 6. And we're almost done. Um, Luke chapter 6 says, verse 27, but to you who are listening, who I am sure is every one of you in this room and online, it says, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Hey, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. It, it, it's in the Bible. Like, it's in here. Um, it's, it's in here. I'm reading it. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you will have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from whom you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners, lend to, even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. Verse 35, but love your enemies. That person who's offended you, that person, that boss, that, that husband, that wife, that child, love your enemies, do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. And the Bible says, then your reward will be great and you will be children of the Most High. Hey, Rabbi Shedere, because he is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. 36 says, be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. 37 says, do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. It is in here. I'm not telling you something out of my own head. It is in the word of God. And I know it is hard. And I know it is in, it, 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 I'm asking you to do a difficult thing. But I can assure you that if you're going to come up higher in the new year, you're going to have to do the word of God. You start by forgiving. You start by doing good. Do you realize that when you're busy doing good, you don't have time in your life to hold on to forg unforgiveness? I know that when I am, when I am sitting, for example, at Menlia Cass, and my client is puking all around, and I am ministering, talking to them about our case, letting them know that I'm here for them, even as I know the stuff that they're going through. 
when I'm doing that, I don't have time in my life to be offended by other things. I promise you that. When I get a phone call at four o'clock saying somebody has been arrested or at two o'clock saying a client has overdosed and you realize how precious life is or when I get a phone call from a crying mom with a client that I just saw two weeks ago and it's on the news that now at age 19 he ran a red light and hit another car and the woman in that car died and now my client is sitting in jail charged with negligence with a, a vehicular homicide you don't have time <laughs> to be offended because you realize how life, how precious life is. You realize that there are other things going on that are more important than holding on to offense. Hear me. I'm not saying you're not justified or you're justified. You've been hurt. I, I acknowledge that. Somebody has hurt you, but you realize that you've also done some hurting that the Lord Jesus has forgiven you for. And that you keep going back to that well of, of mercy. You keep going back to that well of grace. You keep going back. And it never, it, 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 it's always there. I'm going to end by telling you this. In 2022, the Lord is looking for men and women who are about the kingdom business. PT has a trajectory of miracles and healing, of, of, of just explosion of prosperity. But all of that will be impeded if we have people who are holding on to stuff. Oh my gosh. Have you ever tried to be in a sack race where you put your foot in a sack and you try to walk? Okay? You can walk, but are you walking at your full potential? Are you accomplishing the things you're supposed to? I'm not disputing the fact that you might be justified. But we serve a God who's able to reconcile and restore. And on any given day, I would rather have biblical restorative justice that forgives and lets go without condition. Nobody has to tell me they're sorry. And if they do, that's okay. Nobody has to offer amends. If they do, that's okay. But I can tell you that that hole within you gets bigger every time that you continue to let offense fester in it. That hole within you gets bigger the more you let nonsense, crap, offense. Let it go. Let Jesus be your God. He's a God of justice. Let him be the one who repays. Let him be the one who takes charge. Let him, let it go. Give it to him. Amen. You might be saying right now, Sister Delia, I really don't even know where to begin. I've been hurt so much. Um, and there's some of you who um, don't have a relationship with Christ. I think that's the very first place you, you might want to start. Or your relationship with Christ has taken a hit because you're holding on to offense. <laughs> you're holding on to offense. You're mad at him. You're mad at everybody else. You're mad at yourself. And he's saying, this day is a good day. I've heard your grievances. This day is a good day to reconcile to me to be restored, hallelujah, to be restored, amen? So if you're in this room and you would like to not only accept Jesus, but you want to be restored, you know yourself that you are living in unforgiveness. You know that because every time that person's name is mentioned, you roll your eyes internally. Oh, you may not do it in church, but you know how your heart is. You know. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, I am praying right now for everyone in this, under the sound of my voice. I'm not even gonna ask you to stand uh, or, or, or I mean, raise your hand. 
But let me ask you to actually stand. Let me ask you to stand. If you can join me in standing, let's just stand. And I'm just going to pray this prayer. You know who you are. I, I can't do this for you. I can only testify that I'm not the person I used to be when I let go of offenses. And yes, we are a work in progress. But I want to tell you that the Lord is not done with you. And he's most certainly not done with a person who's offended you. He's still able. He's still a good God. He's still faithful. He is still in the business of redemption. No one has ever done anything that he cannot redeem. Even if there are consequences, he is still in the business of redemption and reconciliation and restoration. He's a good God, but you got to let go. So Lord, I lift up everyone under the sound of my voice before you, God. You know our hearts, our desperately wicked hearts, Lord. But you love us nonetheless. And you gave Jesus for us nonetheless. And you said, come to me. So Lord, I pray even right now, Holy Spirit, touch the hearts of my brothers and sisters so that they may be restored to right relationship with you and right relationship with each other. That in households where husbands and wives don't speak to each other, where children don't speak to parents, where, where people go months without even speaking to each other because of offense, we break Rabashe, that wicked spirit of offense. It is a, a spirit of witchcraft. It's not of you. You are kind and forgiven. You are full of mercy. You are full of kindness. You forgive us daily. You intercede on our behalf. And Lord, we want to be like you. And never are we more like you when we forgive. Father, in 2022, you are looking for men and women who will honor you, who will obey you even when it hurts, who will obey you when it's inconvenient, when it's difficult, who will obey you through tears, but their desire will be to obey you nonetheless. That when you say forgive, they will do so immediately. That they will not impede the blessing upon the church and upon their lives by holding on. By holding on. That we will not look to man or woman to validate us, to make us whole. That is your job. That is your business, God. Lord. I cover your people in the blood. I pray, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you will open their eyes to see that you can heal every pain, every guilt. That their, our job is just to let go. To let it go. To give it to you. You have so much in store for us. You have so much in store for us in the new year. In the, even the rest of the year. But we have to honor you and obey you, God, in this thing. It is so hard because within us, we just, we, we can't get past ourselves. But Lord, that's not our mandate. Our mandate is to be like Jesus. And Jesus forgave. No condition. No questions. Father, I just surrender up your people before you. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit will help us. I thank you that people are being set free even right now. People are being set free even right now from the spirit of unforgiveness and the spirit of offense. Do a work in our hearts, oh God. Do a work. Big offenses, medium-sized offenses, small ones. It doesn't matter if somebody uh, assaulted us, violated us, or if somebody cut us off on the road. Offense. You said forgive and let go. 
So we thank you that you hear us. We thank you that you see us. We thank you that you are God of justice. That, when, that even when somebody offends us and hurts us, you know about it. <laughs> and just because we let them go doesn't mean that they don't answer to you. So Lord, help us to do our part and let go. And let God be God. We thank you for all the healing that's happening. We thank you for restoring families and relationships. Some of us may have to call people and say we're sorry. Some of us may have to make amends. But Lord, you are faithful in that way. And you will help us, Lord Jesus. We give you all the glory, God. And we thank you and we bless your holy name this day. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. Praise God for that word again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm going to dismiss you right now and bless you. But I, I'm going to say this, and that is um, someone asked me recently why we're not seeing the miracles and the promises that God has uh, promised to this church. And some even look at PT, and I'm not sure what's wrong with their lens, but, you know, they are where they are and feel like, oh, the church seems like it's stuck. And I'm convinced, I'm really convinced that God is really tired of repeating himself about this offense stuff. See, one of the things as a pastor, I really pay a close attention to God, and this is the third year in a row that God has spoken to us about this offense stuff. And we want to forgive people and help people who have been in prison, and yet we refuse to deal with the prisons that are in our own minds and our own hearts. There are some in our church that, who have been so affected by being offended that they don't even realize how miserable they look. I'll, I'll just look at the, the uh, window in the back so you don't think I'm talking about you. But tell your neighbor, he might be talking about you, just say he might be talking about you. But we, we ask yourself, if you're stuck, is, is it worth your life being put on pause because you just refuse to stop being offended? I'm amazed at the number of people who look at me and look at others who seem like they're getting someplace and they say, you don't understand. No, we understand. We understand it's just not worth holding on to people and impeding your own process. And so my, my prayer is that this year, you and I would just make decisions and say, God, I'm just going to let them go. Put them in your hands and move on. You have no idea. If you would hear some of the stories of people who you think don't have any problems, any challenges. The reason why you don't think that they have problems, any challenges is because they have let their offenders go and have seen the grace of God do things in their lives that they themselves wouldn't even believe. My wife, um, a number of the members say that Every morning and during morning prayer, they see her smiling face. And it's like, when I look at Lady Common's face, it just seems like their birthday party. We're like, are you, are you serious? Are you serious? And so I, I want to encourage you that 
We have six more days. Is six more, five more days? Five more days of this year. Make up your mind to just leave stuff in 2021 and move on to 2022. Praise the name of the Lord. Could you tell the person next to you, you may not know them, but tell them, I'm, I'm moving on to 2022. You know, I'm, I'm just moving on to 2022. I'm just moving on to 2022. As we close in prayer, I want to remind you, and I'm excited that we're going to have um, our watch night service, meaning that we're going to spend the last, we, we missed it last year because of the pandemic, but we're going to be open, uh, having surf, church service on December 31st, Friday night from 10 o'clock, and we're going to enter the new year in the house of the Lord. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, on that night, I'm also going to be giving out to start the beginning of the year uh, oil to anoint yourself. If nothing else, put oil on yourself, which represents the Holy Spirit, so you can get your life out of the grip of the enemy and move forward. And so we're going to be doing that. Uh, also, I um, want to encourage you on next Sunday. I can, I'm excited. I'll be back ministering, and I want to talk to you about what PT is, we are, I'm going to talk to you about what a 5G church looks like. Amen. There's 3G, there's 4G. If you're still operating in 3G, you're in trouble. We're a 5G church, and we're going to tell you what that is. I can highly wait for that. And then finally, as we're about to, I'm going to give you the closing blessing, but um, I want to encourage you to give your offering, your Christmas offering, as I told you, we're trying to raise uh, $350,000 to a retired a debt of this church so my prayer I believe in God that in 2022 we will be totally debt free in this church praise the Lord and we also want to begin renovating the basement and so if you want to give your I like this is the one offering that I like uh, writing a check for and give my gift to Jesus and so um, want to do that and if you missed this Sunday, don't worry. You can give next Sunday or online, and we'll let you know how we're doing. If you could put out your hand, I want to bless you. Uh, we don't give a closing prayer. We give a closing blessing. Again, thank you so much, uh, Brian, for just honoring us with your presence. You could easily said, I don't want the award. And so thank you for allowing us to uh, bless you, and it's so good to see your lovely wife. Uh, closing blessing found in Numbers chapter 6 verse 24 to 26 whether you're in the building or if you're at home put your hands out so that you can receive the blessing of the Lord may the Lord bless you and protect you may he look after you shield you defend you and take care of you especially for the remainder of this year may the Lord look after you shield you defend you and take care of you may the Lord make his face to shine grin beam and show his pleasure on you May the Lord be gracious, kind-hearted, pleasant, and compassionate to you. May the Lord show you his favor that will promote you, that is move you forward, appreciate you, not depreciate you, support you, and side with you as you side with him. And finally, may the Lord give you his shalom, his peace, his rest, his harmony, his calmness, his composure, his, his prosperity, and his success. And may the Lord remove anything that causes agitation, or discord with his divine purpose and destiny for your life. I bless you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And everybody say, I receive that blessing. God bless you and stay safe and have a wonderful, incredible last week of the year. Hey, family. Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. Special thanks to those of you who continue to generously support the work of this ministry. We are so grateful for you and it's because of you that we can be a blessing to this community. If you enjoyed the service today, please like, share with your friends and family, and subscribe to our channel so that you can get a notification whenever our services go live. We also invite you to follow us on social media at PT Cambridge in order to stay connected to this ministry. Hey, we look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching and God bless you.